Each day around the world, thousands of trains run across thousands of miles of track. Whether they're transporting people or goods, the railway has become an integral part of life over the last century. And central to its success in no small part is the Chorus site at Workington. Based on the shores of the Solway Firth, the plant has been producing rail track for global markets for 125 years. During that time, it's remained one of the industry's leaders, employing the latest technology to produce rails and sleepers of the highest quality. Each year, the plant produces enough rails to cover the distance between Workington and Istanbul, and more than 400,000 sleepers. Track is supplied to customers as far afield as Asia to Europe. Both continents operate some of the fastest trains in the world. So how does the Workington site do it? Good afternoon, Cardus Rail. Each day, trains deliver 1,000 tonnes of steel blooms from the Chorus Teesside plant on the east coast of England, overland to the West Cumbrian site at Workington. Blooms come in different grades of steel and are used to make rails of varying durability and wear resistance depending on the customer's requirements. Each bloom is given a unique identity number, which is logged into the Integrated Manufacturing System, IMS. This allows Chorus to precisely trace its movement throughout the process route. The furnace holds 67 blooms and takes around two hours to superheat them so they become malleable enough to shape into the desired form. On leaving the furnace, high-powered water jets clean the bloom of surface oxide scale before progressing to the first of three rolling stands used to shape the steel. In the breakdown mill, operators use computer-aided technology to compress the blooms which pass through the rolls five times. They are reduced in size from 13 by 10 inch sections to a narrow but extended in length cross section of 10 by 6 inches. At this stage, the blooms are trimmed to an optimum rolling length by computer aided shears.
ensure a good, clean surface finish for a second time, the balloons are descaled before moving on to the shaping and finishing process. The roughing and finishing stands work in a similar manner to the breakdown mill, but this time different shape rolls are used to compress the blooms. Each roll has been specifically designed to help shape the steel into the physical rail dimensions requested by the customer. In the roughing mill, the blooms pass through the rolls five times, the first of which is a knifing pass, which is incorporated into the rolls to form the rail foot. At this stage, the blooms begin to show an early resemblance to their final rail shape. After roughing, they head into the finishing mill, where they're compressed once more. And it's here that the precise sectional dimensions are incorporated into the rail. To meet the tight customer specifications, regular section measurements are carried out by trained, experienced members of the rolling team and logged into the IMS system. Sleepers are also manufactured at the Workington site. They are the rail components which hold rail track together and are rolled in virtually the same way as rails, with the exception that each sleeper section is cut into 10 metre lengths, called mulks. During the last pass, the rails are branded with information, such as the rail section, grade of steel and year of manufacture. These details are an essential part of rail manufacture all over the world, allowing stock control and traceability for the customer. High pressure water sprays again clean the rail to give it a super clean, smooth surface finish. From here, and still at approximately 1000 degrees centigrade, the rails pass under circular saws, which cut the rails to the optimum length for further processing, which is dependent on the actual ordered finished length. So at the hot source, samples are taken for manufacturing and metallurgical testing to ensure the rails have been produced with the correct customer specifications. Chorus Rail Workington has its own metallurgical laboratories where testing is carried out to the latest high technical standards demanded by its customers. After being sawn to length, each rail is uniquely identified with a heat number, bloom number and rail letter at the rotary stamper, again enabling Chorus Rail Workington to trace the rail through each stage of the manufacturing process, should they need to look backwards to pinpoint any problems, if and when they occur. In order to ensure a good product surface quality, Workington has incorporated a rail turnover unit, which can lift selected rails off the roller table a closer, specialised, full surface inspection by trained and certified operators. There are two options for cooling the rails and one for cooling the sleepers. Sleepers are transferred to special walking beam cooling banks. As each sleeper is moved up the bank, it cools flat enough to be transferred to the sleeper finishing process. The molts are transferred by road to subcontractors where sleepers are finished and then delivered to the customer at trackside. The journey for rails, though, is slightly different. If harder rails are needed, for example on lines where wear patterns are high, they are computer-assisted cooled by the mill heat treatment process used to refine the internal steel structure. Otherwise, they are allowed to cool naturally in air on specially designed cooling banks. Because the ends of the rails cool more quickly than the centre, they are cambered, resulting in a relatively straight rail as it reaches the end of the cooling bank. Unfortunately, allowing the rails to cool naturally doesn't make them straight enough. So, once the rails have reached a temperature of less than 60 degrees centigrade, rolls are used to complete the process. This is called roller straightening. Horizontal and vertically mounted rollers are used to eliminate rail eccentricity. The result is an ultra-straight, ultra-flat rail suitable for high-speed track. 
Any small deviations in the rail running surface could critically affect the train's ride over them and also the track's lifespan. So making sure each rail meets the highest specifications is crucial. Now, relying on the human eye to assess their straightness is no longer adequate, so a continuous testing process has been developed to identify the smallest undulation. Lasers are used to assess the flatness of the rail. It is passed through eight horizontal and eight vertical laser beams, which are directed onto the rail surface. If the rail isn't flat, the reflected beams will vary, and computer systems will indicate where there's a fault. Secondly, magnetic fields are used in the form of eddy currents to look for surface defects. Probes are spaced around a disc which revolves at 2,000 revs per minute. As the rail passes over the disc, any changes in the magnetic field potentially show there may be defects on the underside of the rail. A coloured powdered paint jet automatically sprays any potential fault and is followed up by a manual check to assess whether the fault is genuine. Ultrasonic sound waves are also used to detect internal defects. Any potential faults are again sprayed with coloured powdered paint jets automatically. These two are then inspected manually using portable ultrasonic testing. Before the rail is dispatched to the customer, it is cut to length using high-speed saws. Drill holes can be made on the rail ends for fish plating purposes. Then the rail is sent for a full 100% inspection by trained quality control inspectors. The final checks on rail dimensions, straightness and surface quality are made. All equipment used for these checks is properly calibrated and certified for use. The rolling mill can produce rail of up to 40 metres. However, the welding plant can combine them to produce rail of up to 216 metres in length. That's the equivalent of 20 buses parked end to end. The rails are moved along conveyors and have their end profiles cleaned to ensure good electrical contact is made between the rail ends inside the welding machine. The machine joins the rails together using the flash butt welding method. Electrical energy melts the two rails together by passing around 70,000 amps through them. The machine then forges the rail ends together using around 40 tonnes of force. The rail is air-cooled to below 400 degrees centigrade and further reduced in temperature using a high-pressure water cooling hood. Lasers are used to assess the rail's alignment and the press operator uses hydraulic rams to straighten the rail. It's then re-scanned to check if further straightening is needed. Finally, the head of the rail is precision ground over the length of the weld to ensure a seamless join. All rails passed for dispatch can be transported by rail, road and even sea using the local port of Workington, which has a direct rail link to the plant. Chorus Rail Workington not only strives to produce rails and sleepers of the highest quality, it also endeavours to meet stringent environmental standards. The plant operates an environmental management system and is accredited with the ISO 14001. The system has reduced the amount of oil used by a third. Regenerative ceramic burners optimise fuel use in one of the most combustion-efficient furnaces in Chorus. Scaled from the processes, it's recycled to Chorus's integrated iron and steelworks and recycling schemes have been set up for waste oil, wood, paper and refractory. To make sure there's continued progress in environmental practices, Chorus Rail produces an environmental improvement programme each year, which sets annual objectives. Furthermore, it's now become the first Chorus site to attain the ISO 9001-2000 certificate for quality business management. Over the last 125 years, the Workington site has become a market leader. 
Its dedication to quality has seen it adopt the latest technology, as well as one of the most efficient manufacturing processes. It's no wonder Workington has developed an outstanding reputation worldwide.